Hello my wonderful viewers, how are you doing? How have you been? Today I'm in Matungulu, Machakos County. I told you I'm in a journey of discovering the world of dogs and I'm glad that you've been with me all this long. Have you subscribed yet? Why not? If you've been watching us and you have not subscribed kindly, please make sure you subscribe and also do not forget to hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. So I'm in Matungulu, Machakos County, visiting PM Dogs and Kennel and they are going to introduce us to their dogs and also their journey of dogs and how it all started and why they are doing it. This is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. I'm your girl Linda Kenyita. Subscribe. Philip. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Mm, uh, introduce your name and your kennel and uh, kindly tell us how long you've been keeping dogs. Uh, my name is Philip Mumo. Um, the name of uh, my kennel is PM Dogs and Kennels. Mm -hmm. I started my journey 2020 June. Yeah. So, dogs. Why dogs? Dogs have been my passion since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I first got my first dog when I was, I think, two years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, which was your first breed? My first breed was a local breed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then now from local breeds now, which which was your first pedigree breed? My first pedigree breed was a German Shepherd, and it's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we're going to meet your first dog. So, uh, how long have you been now running the kennel? The kennel have been running it for one and a half years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, let me ask, how did your journey begin? My journey began with the two dogs, mm -hmm. uh, two German shepherds mm -hmm. that I started in June. Mm -hmm. The three months, I started the small kennel. Mm -hmm. Then I told my dad, I think this that uh, this is the job I'll do. Mm -hmm. Since Corona hit, mm -hmm. I told my dad, I think I leave alone my other passion of graphics and mm -hmm. just do mm -hmm. dog their breeding. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, now, for you to now, from let's say having two dogs to now, how many dogs do you have now? Right now, I have nine. Mm -hmm. um, w the knowledge you had for dog for you to confidently say now i can ha i can handle more than two dogs how did that happen did you have to do any kind of training did you have any mentorship how did you just get to more than two dogs i got to two dogs because i had mentorship from kuna kuna dogs mm -hmm. he's a he's the man who shaped me to the person i am today for breeding dogs mm -hmm. He taught me about breeding, how to keep dogs healthy, how to train them a bit, mm -hmm. how to socialize them. Yeah. Okay. Which which breeds do you have currently? Right now I have German Shepherds, mm -hmm. as people like German Shepherds, mm -hmm. Rottweiler, mm -hmm. uh, Siberian Husky, mm -hmm. two of them. Mm -hmm. Saint Bernard mm -hmm. and Rottweiler wow. and Japanese pits also. And uh, is your is your kennel and your dogs registered? Yeah, most of my dogs are registered. Just a few of them aren't registered because mm -hmm. they, they looked pretty. They had the right temperament, mm -hmm. so just just took them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now introduce me to your dogs. Right here we have Tina. She's four years old. Yeah. Tina. Right here we have Luna. She's one year, four months. Right here we have. Roxy, she's one year, five months. Uh, right here we have Zoe, she's one year, four months, five days. Right here we have the sassy, the sassy Bella. She's one year, 
Yeah. Right here, we have Annika. She's called Annika. She's six months. And she's quite fierce. She's quite fierce. Right here we right here we have What's your name? See your name. Huskies normally have different kind of colors of eyes. Most of them are red, some of them are blue, some of them are brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do, so like if she is by color, does that mean the parents had different uh, the, the parents had different eyes. The father had blue eyes, mm -hmm. the mother had brown eyes. Yeah. Right here we have General. Yeah, General. I'm familiar with General. Hi, General. Yeah, you met him at October. Yeah. Hi. And right here we have Howie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's one year, six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Philip. Uh, as a young guy in the industry and also as a young breeder who has not been breeding dogs for long, what are some of the challenges that you have come across? Uh, the challenges I've come across is like people don't trust young breeders. Mm -hmm. Like they, like, they are hesit hesitant to buy. Like, buy. Mm -hmm. It's like they haven't been in the game for long. Mm -hmm. So that they have trust issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, when it comes to your dogs, what is the feeding regime of your dogs and what do your dogs eat? The feeding regime of my dog is like a, bal a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. So in the morning my dogs eat pellets, mm -hmm. rook and rice, chicken heads mm -hmm. and chicken feet. Mm -hmm. So that's the mm -hmm. meal. And um, how many times do you feed your dogs? Uh, they are fed twice. Mm -hmm. In the morning, it's pellets. In the evening, it's broken rice, chicken head with chicken feet. Yeah. Now, this question I have to ask, because one of my viewers asked, like, um, when it comes to you personally, like, why broken rice? Why not something like ugali, the, 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 the normal maize flour? Why rice? Uh, because broken rice has, has carbohydrates, mm -hmm. so that... Uh, it doesn't get aflatoxin the way maize gets. Mm -hmm. So it's better you just feed it uh, broken rice. Mm -hmm. Because the dogs have a low immunity of aflatoxin. Mm -hmm. So it can kill a dog easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, uh, why? Let's, uh, you have, you have, uh, let's put huskies, you have a, a, a bubble, and then why the breeds you have in the kennel and not just any other breed? When I was researching for dogs, I was looking for special, specific dogs. Mm -hmm. The ones which excite people, the dogs which you only see in movies or TV, mm -hmm. but you can't see them in reality. Mm -hmm. So those were the specific dogs I was looking for. <laughs> and I get you because uh, I was excited when I saw the the huskies because, hey, watching movies, huskies come from a cold place and uh, you see them pulling cats. Uh, 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 are those the breeds I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Siberian huskies are used for pulling sleds mm -hmm. in a snowy place. Mm -hmm. So Siberian huskies are very special. Mm -hmm. Very special dogs. Now, when it comes to, to them, let's talk, now that you've mentioned they're used for pulling sledge in snowy places, how do they adapt to, en to the environment here? Because here yeah, we do not have snow, it's not, it doesn't get that cold. How do they adapt? Because it's like Siberian Huskies have double coats. So where they are from, mm -hmm. the summers are normally very hot. Hotter than even Nairobi oh. or Machakos. Mm -hmm. So they, it's, they adapt very easily. Mm -hmm. You can take them to Mombasa, mm -hmm. they can adapt. Mm -hmm. They adapt very easily to any weather conditions. Mm -hmm. But rainy conditions can 
doing some issues like pneumonia or something like that mm. yeah okay that leads to my next question what health challenges have you come across for the year that you've been keeping dogs the health challenges of uh, come across are like tick fever mm-hmm. tick fever has given me quite a challenge and a run for my money mm-hmm. yeah because it is it has come it comes and goes comes and goes so mm-hmm. you have to keep your dogs on a strict diet you uh, you give them multivitamins you give them every month you have to inject them with the multivitamins antibiotics to just keep them safe because you don't know when the problem problem will arise and 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 tick fever like tick is that something that comes from ticks and when it comes to ticks and pests in control in in general how do you control pests uh pests uh, i control them by i spray every every week i have to spray pesticides i wash the dogs twice a week just to keep the things in bay and uh, i have to spray clean cleanliness uh, sprays around the house where they play you know dogs like eating eating things so you have just to spray to be cautious yeah in your journey of breeding dogs um how 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 did you how did as seeing that you're a young man how did your family take your love for dogs and now saying like i want to have more than two dogs yeah like i have to say this cuz my father was kind of against it but he also so when i was small i used to in every composition when i was small I used to write in our family we have we consist of four people three children and my mom and dad then my dad was people are like three and only two and then i see the third one is my dog called mac <laughs> so people are like hey. so my dad was like no wonder you he has a passion he has a passion let's just see if he'll grow out of it or stick with it so the more i got older is the more i got interested i, I told my dad i'll keep that dog when i'm older he just says when you get your own place you'll keep it my dad was like you can do you can do everything if you believe in it so my brother was a key person who helped me with this he helped me with the financial support emotional support because you know you also need the emotional support these dogs aren't easy to keep there's a part you'll just read and say ah what did i get myself into because it will take some time your dog when training it doesn't want to listen hey, it's like keeping a baby but the baby is growing faster than you expect mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so the person who i thank the most is my brother for the mm-hmm. emotional and financial support oh, okay. your people i keep saying keeping a dog is like a baby you had it from the one who's having more than two <laughs> i can imagine that now which is your favorite breed that you'd want to own that you do not currently own the breed that i want to own but i don't have right now mm-hmm. is a tibetan mastiff mm-hmm. yeah now you've just started your journey uh when you look into the future do you have plans for your kennel how far can you see yourself the plans i have for this kennel is the I have big dreams for it. The first dream is I open a dog paradise. Like your dogs when a person travels, you can leave your dog let it stay in a in our kennel, we'll take care of it, groom it, take it for walks, whatever. The second is I want to open a security farm. So I'll take a couple of dogs 
couple of uh, security guards base them around then yeah but also that will need a lot of money a lot of resources mm-hmm. yeah and i'm thinking everything starts with a vision and then you direct that vision to ah good now you've mentioned that you acquire your you've acquired all of your dogs from when they were puppies now what is the process of acquiring that tiny delicate thing and then nurturing it until it becomes an adult uh, when you get a puppy you have to make sure before you get the puppy it has to be uh, vaccinated with parvovirus because parvovirus is a deadly disease that no breeder wants in their backyard completely mm-hmm. so after one month you it's immunized with uh, parvovirus three months then you, you inject it with the DHLPP and rabies then when it's one year old you immunize it again with the rabies and after every one year you immunize it with the rabies and immunize it with the rabies alone or as for me the DHLPP and the rabies yeah now all your dogs are registered when you're buying a dog uh do you buy a dog when it's already registered or now you acquire the dog and go through the process of registration what i do is i it's a uh, obligation of the breeder to register the puppy so when you go for the puppy it's already registered so the only thing you need to do is reg- register it to your name yeah and you have to be in the association yeah Oh when when you when you are acquiring a dog like now as a breeder can you go out and find a dog that's a nice dog it's you, you fall in love with that dog and acquire it and go through the process of registration yourself you can't do that because you have the dog has to be has to have a history a clear history like you know the parents mm-hmm. the great grandparents the great great grandparents have to be indicated in the paper of the registration so you can't get a dog then just register it because it's not in the East African Kennel Club any books so you can't and now let's talk about the husky um it's a it's a pretty dog it's a beautiful dog uh, and uh, if somebody would think about acquiring a husky what are the expectations so do they need to know about the huskies huskies are very pretty dog pretty dogs curious dogs intelligent very intelligent so, so and they can't be your watch dogs or prote- protection dogs cuz those dogs are too friendly <laughs> too friendly they love greeting everybody so they're too friendly so you can't keep it as a watchdog so a siberian husky normally sheds like twice a year but sheds a lot a lot so you have to comb it regularly wash it and uh, if you have a big backyard make sure you have be a, a big fence because Siberian huskies know how to escape any the independent dogs so they know how to escape like one time my do- Siberian husky escaped without us knowing we found it outside outside the gate just waiting for us and as we thought it was playing inside yeah so Siberian huskies are intelligent dogs yeah When it comes to the general health and fitness of your dogs, what's your regime when it comes to playtime and exercise? Like my dogs exercise every day for 2 hours. Uh so we have a like a timetable. The German shepherds go out play for 2 hours, then the bobble goes out plays for 2 hours, Rottweiler goes out plays for two hours Siberian husky and the 
Saint Bernard goes out and plays for two hours, but the Japanese pits we can leave it outside the whole time because it's friendly, but a bit sassy at times. So we do that. Oh, why why are you separating the breeds? Do, do they get along? Do they fight? Why the separation? The separation is because Bob and a Rottweiler are normally very territorial. Sometimes they get into fights that even us ourselves, separating the dogs can be a problem. Because we got, because me and my helper, there's a time the uh, Bobble and the Rotola got into a fight and separating the dogs took like 15 minutes and both of us came out with dog bites. So it takes time, it takes time. So the only necessary thing you can do is separate their playtime. Yeah. And when <laughs> when it comes to your other family members, how is their socialization with the dogs? Uh, with the other family members, my mom was against getting a dog. <laughs> was uh, very against getting a dog. But right now, she's my number one supporter because she's the she's the one who will ask me, "Did you wash the dogs?" She'll call me from Nairobi and call and say, did you wash the dogs? Did you give them water? Did you feed them? Yeah, so she's like my number one supporter right now. Yeah. My sister is like the social socialite. She like take photos of the dogs, <laughs> put them on Instagram. Yeah, mm -hmm. so like she's like my model, but I'm not paying her. So she advertises with my dogs, yeah. Taking advantage of family people, right? <laughs> okay. Now, you've owned dogs these since you were a kid, uh, and um, you have the experience. Let me say now, you have the experience of staying with dogs. What advice would you give to dog lovers who maybe are just starting? They have acquired their first dog. Maybe it's somebody who's contemplating getting a dog, and they're still researching. What advice would you give to? A dog lover who's thinking about getting a dog? Uh, first, to dog lovers who are thinking to get a dog, research on the dog you want to get. You have to thoroughly research on the dog you want to get. And the mood, the mood you're in. If you're an energetic person, you have get an energetic dog. If you're not an energetic person, get a dog which is laid back like you. Then, you have to know, getting a dog is a process, it's a journey. It will have its ups and downs. There's a time it, the dog will get sick. There's a time it will, it will get naughty, disturb you. And you. But at the end of the day, the dog will sit by you better than any best friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Love your animals. And that is why we love dogs, people. Uh, people, my day at Matunguli is coming to an end. I've had a nice time. I've had a nice chat with Philip. I've interacted one-on-one -on -one with the Siberian Huskies. I usually see them. So this is the first time I'm interacting with them one-on-one -on -one and they are pretty. So I can say I can tick that box of new breeds I'm meeting and new breeds I'm getting to interact with. I hope you're with me. I hope you're subscribing and I hope you're watching. It's important to watch a little bit longer than you usually do. If you get to the end, that's better. And also, if you'd like to get in contact with breeders, we always leave their contacts at the end of each and every episode. And also, if you're out there and you're thinking about a partnership with us, you can always reach us to us through our social media, that is Dog TV Kenya. And also, you can drop us an email at kenyadogtv at gmail.com. Call. You've been awesome. It's been wonderful. I'm your girl Linda Kenyita and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Until the next episode, bye. I have the energies of the Chocho. At least I can come say, you know what? I am proud Nyerian and as church is shash. In a tango, sleep, 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 sleep,
لازمه لازم.